off piece. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. I got a guest today, Andrew. Good to see you Robles in the house. Hey, yo, yo. We're going to be talking about my bust out hand at the Bellagio tournament. We're going to talk about how f I got. We're going to talk about my up and coming book. The book is done. Check Raising the Devil will be out May 12th in bookstores. You can pre-order at Amazon.com uh, or, or any Barnes and Noble. I think they're Barnes and Noble. Um, and then we're going to also talk about uh, my Deep Stacks University, my online training site. It will be up in July. We'll be launching, but we'll be uh, there'll be a lot of things and a lot of brochures about it at the World Series. We'll talk about the World Series of Poker coming up. We'll talk about the epidemic of swine flu going around and how we're going to do what we're going to do at the World Series to hopefully control this anybody from getting sick. Uh, we're going to talk about my hand of the week on the mouthpiece. Welcome back to the mouthpiece, and as you know, I bubbled the 25,000 event. Um, it all came down to three days of perfect play on my part, and one f***ing bad hand by Martin Dick Niff on the night before, on day three, where I flat called with ace-king, flop came king-queen four with two spades, the original razor checked. I put Martin Dick Niff on jack-queen, so I decided to check, thinking for sure he would bet this pot. He elected to check. On the turn, it came a, a six. The original razor checked again. I made an oversized bet of 47,000, um, in which Martin Dick Niff calls. The original razor folds, um, and the river card comes a 10, and I move all in for his last 62,000. He snap calls me, shows me queen 10 offsuit, and he wins a $250,000 pot. In which way? In which case, he ran it up to three hundred seventy thousand and decided to go broke to Freddie Deeb in about ten minutes after that. That was really the hand that really cost me in this major tournament. Uh, instead of having five hundred fifty thousand at the time, I had about two hundred and forty. Uh, I grinded my way to about three hundred at the end of the day. And uh, for all of you out there that don't know what happened, I picked up queens versus aces, uh, big blood cut off to button to small blind. And uh, I overraised it from the big from the cutoff. The button called. Small blind re-raised at 146 in a in a somewhat squeeze situation where I could have anything. And uh, because I overraised the pot coming in, I thought that he could easily be making a, a play here with almost anything. And I called, and he showed me aces, and that's how I went broke. So that is what happened to me as I bubbled back to back 10k and 25k tournaments. And uh, after cashing 8 out of 10, this is not the way I wanted things to start. So, that's what happened in the Bellagio main event. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to me. Goodbye. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, hey, it's been good listening to you talk, What's Mike. going on there, I, Andrew? I'm How glad you doing, I'm buddy? on the show, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I, uh, I've missed you. And Andrew will be taking phone calls with me later on here on the show. So, uh, anything you want to talk to him about, but you'll be able to. apparently there's some tough technical difficulties and I cannot hear the phone call until Mike talks to it. So. Yeah, so you'll be able to, to I'll be relaying the, the, uh, the, the messages to him uh, when the phone calls come in and you'll be able to talk to him. Um, also, uh, let's see what else is going on. You've been um, playing a lot of PLL online. Yeah, oh, look, online poker. I've been playing a lot of Potlum at Omaha online uh, and I've been doing really, really well. I've, uh, let's see, won over the last two weeks. Uh, about 180,000. I made a small donation towards it. Yeah. You know, I did and, my part. And uh, I've been playing, uh, I'm really working hard on the game. I feel like I've, I've really made the adjustment that I needed to make. Uh, I thought before I was, uh, like, people would raise, I would re-raise with aces, and then, and then the flop would come a little bit scary. They check raise me, and I'd end up losing five or six or seven thousand with two aces. and. What I've learned to uh, somewhat do a lot more when you're playing these deep stack PLOs is I, I really love flat calm with aces in position and uh, and then looking what kind of flop comes and, and being able to really, them not really be able to put you on a hand. I've mixed that up a lot in the playing deeper stack. Uh, and I learned that also by following, I, I saw Durr do that one hand against um, uh, uh, Patrick Antonius back about uh, a couple months ago where Patrick raised with the, the queens Another guy called and Durr overcalled with the aces, and it came ace queen, and uh, and Durr had uh, 
the three aces and Patrick had three queens and he could never put them on it because the way the betting went. And I, I think when you're playing real deep in PLO, the thing that I learned the most now is do not go crazy with aces pre-flop and do a lot of do a lot of min raising and a lot of like like re small re-raising with lots of different hands to throw people off and keep the pot small. And I've learned how to do that and I, I still have a long ways to go. I, I, I really still need to learn to be a little bit more aggressive in spots. But uh, as for right now, I, I think that I, I play a really good pot control PLO, and I think that's why I'm winning. The World Series is coming up. Uh, we are going to have a lot of shows in between now and the World Series. Uh, but as you uh, know, we have a swine flu epidemic that's going around the world. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go talk to Jeffrey Pollock uh, probably tomorrow, and I'm, hopefully we can get these... Um, uh, get some of those uh, wet handy wipes that just pull right out and everybody wipes down before they walk in the Amazon room and uh, anybody ca coughing or sneezing that has a cold not be allowed in the tournament uh, because it's going to be real hard to control a, a, a virus this bad or hopefully by then in the next three weeks it won't be around but chances are from what I hear it's going to get only going to get worse and we're going to have to do something about containing uh, this uh, disease from getting really bad, especially when there's going to be 3,000 people in one spot and everybody's touching all the cards and rubbing their noses and coughing and touching their noses because I get sick every year at the World Series and I don't want to just die this year. So that's what's going on there. Now, next up on the agenda, we're going to talk about my book. My book is done for everybody out there. It is finished. It is printed and it is ready for release May 12th. It will be in bookstores. Um, we're going to be in all major bookstores. We're going to be on the front of uh, Barnes & Noble uh, bookstores. We're going to be in the front right when you walk in. We're going to be at Amazon.com. You can pre-order my book, Check Raising the Devil. Uh, we're going to have major giveaways on Full Tilt. Full Tilt has... Uh, gone out of their way and they have purchased 10,000 books to start in which they will be giving them away in all kinds of different tournaments or giving them away per full tilt poker points. I expect all my fans to pick up one of these books because it is a great, great, great autobiography uh, that I spent the last three years writing and I hope you all enjoy it. So um, it's done and it is ready for release May 12th. And as you know, our hand of the week is brought to you by FullTiltPoker.com. You want to see me out there playing at FullTiltPoker.com, you can see me. Also, Deep Stacks University, it's our opening site. It's going to be up and coming real soon. It's www.DeepStacks.com. Uh, and uh, we'll be up and running probably in, in uh, July, early July, late June. And uh, any questions you want to know about that, you can call in and ask me about because uh, I am the dean of the University of Deep Stacks University. Um, the hand of the week playing 1020 pot limit Omaha. This is how the hand went. I raised it up with 7, 8, 9, 10 double suited. I raised it to $60 in a 1020 game from the one spot. Our good old friend Brad Booth re raised it. At this particular time, it now gets called by from above, which from above likes to give a little bit of action sometimes in the, in the PLO. At this particular time now, the small blind re-raises it and goes all in for $893. Well, knowing that, they could, that Brad can re-raise, and Brad's got about 6,000 in front of him, or 5,000 5, in front of him, I was a little bit worried, but I said to myself, well, if the one guy re-raised and Brad re-raised me from the one hole, there's a good chance they both have aces, and if they both have aces, I love my 7, 8, 9, 10 double suited. So I called the 8, 9, 10 jack, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, double suited, at which time it came back to Brad, who re-raised the pot. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, who, call, uh, yeah, who re-raised the pot, and then it came back to From Above, who had $210, and he re-re-raised the pot. He had $22,000 in front of him. And, uh, and I, uh, I started the hand with $14,000, and it came back to me, and it was like something like, I don't know, 
7,000, 9,000 to me. To make a long story short, I put the whole 13,000 in. Brad Booth put the whole 6,800 6, he had. From Above put the whole 13,000 in. And uh, we turned over the hands. And um, this is pretty amazing. I had 7, 8, 9, 10. Brad Booth, who re re raves it, had the 6, 9, 10 king. I love Brad Booth. With three hearts, by the way. 6, 9, 10 king. The from above, who re re raised it, who put in and put me all in with his 22K, in which I had, a, I think I had 11,000 starting the hand. His hand is 4, 5, 10 jack, double suited, and one of them was the suit I had. And the other guy who made it 893 had the ace, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> These are the four hands that we've got, found a way to play about a $30,000 pot. The flop came seven, or I'm sorry, eight, ten, two. With two to my suit, which nobody had, I flopped top two open ender, and I had everybody in the hand drawing stone dead between all three of them after the flop to five outs. To five outs they had. They had five outs. Brad had three kings. Uh, the other guy had uh, uh, a runner, runner, dummy end of the straight, or a runner, runner, ace, ace, was ace, three, four, five. Yeah. And uh, I end up on the turn filling up. An eight came on the turn, and it was all, everybody was drawing stone cold dead on the turn. Ship it. But, and I end up winning 22,000 profit in this hand, and it is my hand of the week, and I've posted it out there on pokerhand.org. It was probably the most incredible hand I've ever won because I just couldn't believe the hands that were turned over. The 6, 9, 10, <laughs> six, nine, ten king, the 4, 5, 10 jack double suited, and the ace, 3, 4, yes. 5. That's my hand of the week on the mouthpiece. I hope you all enjoyed it. Okay. Here comes my favorite part of the show, the phone calls. So light up the phones. Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's my birthday. Welcome. Happy birthday, Mike. Hey, Mike, you know, I actually knew it was your birthday because I Wikipedia'd it. I, I, I Wikipedia'd Mike Matisseau. Yep. And when I saw it was your birthday, I was like, oh, wait, I have to call and say happy birthday. Well, today in my birthday edition in the show, I have a special guest, uh, Andrew, good to see you, Robo. Do you know who he is? I've heard of him. You've heard of him? But, but you don't know who he is? Yeah, I'm sure. Be, oh, all right. Uh, I like I'm her sure caller you... already. All yeah, right. She's earning points from All right. Well, anyway. So... Well, hold on, hold on. I'm sure that he's like one of the young, young. He is. He's a, he's, a, he's a young, good player. And uh, and if you don't if you don't know who he is, then f you don't need to ask him any questions. So anyway, yeah. he's here. No, I mean, it's not like I've never heard of him because I have. You know, he's just. He's up there with Tom Duan in the, you know, like the new up and That's why I don't know that much about him, but I yeah. have heard of him. So you got any questions for me today? Yes. Okay. I am 17 years old. You're 17 years and old. And next week I'm turning 18. And next week and I will be and you're And wait, time. you're 17 turning 18 and you actually seem like a nice guy, not a punk, which is good. I already like you. When oh this kid, when so this kid too. sitting next to me, Andrew Robel, was 18, he was sitting there making fun of me, talking to me online. You See? know, in my oh, advanced yeah. age, I've learned not to be great at the fish. Ah. So I'm much smarter now this. Okay, oh. so what's your question? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm a fucker, but only with friends, you know? When we're playing poker, I love to just talk See, to See, I'm, way, I'm a fucker, but only with people I know. But that's yeah, what I've learned the most. that's how I am. All right, so what's your question? Yeah. Okay, well, next week, uh, my mom made reservations at a, a resort and casino in upstate New York, and I will be playing poker for the first time, and I'm super excited, and I'm also very nervous. Okay. And I'm kind of afraid that the nerves are going to get the better of me, and... I, I don't know. I'm really excited. So you're going to play poker. I, you're going to play poker for the first time when you turn 18 next week at a, the Reserve Casino in New York, and you're nervous. What should you do yeah. about being nervous? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. Well, what you need to do is you, when you you play online, uh, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Are you nervous when you play online? N not at all. Well, I mean. Well, there, there you go. No, not at all, except for like. Two nights ago, when I thought about next week oh, yeah. and how I'm going to be playing poker for the first time, right. the and only, that just like, okay. Just pretend yeah. like you're playing online, and 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 use all the things that you've learned, and, and play exactly like that. If you if you start to think, oh my God, they they got tells on me, they're looking at me, oh my God, blah blah blah, then you're going to get all nervous. Just just relax, 
you know, and just, uh, you know, play your game. And uh, you'll notice after the first five minutes you won't be nervous. You'll, things will fall into place. Thanks, okay, Sean, can I ask you uh, another question? Yeah. Yeah, my, my friend uh, Andrew wants to chime in real quick. He's going to give you uh, some advice. Like, I started playing in the casino when I was really young. You know, I was playing when I was 18, and, like, you know, when you, you have this image of, you know, the Indian casino is going to be full of sharks, you know, all these professionals are going to, you know, all these tricks and get tells on me, and, like, there's not going to be, you know, any good players at the Indian casino. It's going to be the same as online, you know, and if you just play your normal game, like, they're not going to pick up any tells on you, and you should be fine. There you go. So... It's, he don't be worried about a lot of good players playing there. You'll be fine. This means so much to me, guys. I mean, like I'm a huge fan of you, Mike, and Thanks, so buddy. it means a ton to be able to get advice from you guys. It means a ton. Okay. Um, I have. I'm only gonna blow four hundred dollars because I'm You're only not, gonna blow you know, four hundred. You're not gonna lose four hundred. You're gonna win a couple thousand. Well, I would. You're mind bringing four hundred. You're gonna win a couple thousand, and on my show next week, you're gonna tell me how much you won. I will definitely call in next week. Well, no, next week I will be playing. It will be the first time I ever play. So uh -huh. I'll call the week after that to tell you how it went. All right, buddy. Keep in touch and call me and let me know how it went, okay? All right, thank you. You got it. Take care. Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's my birthday. What's going on? Mike Mattishow? Yeah, it's me. Oh, my God, dude. You're my favorite, dude. I'm your favorite? Uh -huh. Well, you know what? Yeah. Today, not only do you have me on my birthday, but I have... Andrew, good to see you, Robel. Is sitting right next to me. Do you What's know who up, he is? Man? He's. Nah, not, I don't you don't know who he is. He's no. a. No one loves me. He's a nobody. You know, none of your fans love me, buddy. I know. Well, right that's what happens when you're a nobody, man. You got to win a tournament, buddy. <laughs> anyway, are you and uh, Antonio Sandiari? Oh no, no, no! Do not put me in the same <laughs> sentence as me and Antonio Sandiari. Uh, put me in. I love like Antonio. What did he say? What did what this kid say? He said me and him were his favorite. Okay, hey, so man, I have a question for you, man. You like me and my buddies all play a lot of poker, and uh, we got into, into kind of an argument about you and Phil Hummus the other day, and I was wondering if you could clarify that for all us. All right, question about me and Phil Hummus. Go ahead. Yeah, the question is, is that I had heard and then thought that you and Phil Hummus like were were good buddies and just kind of played like. You know, uh, no, we don't. We, fun, we, we don't play. Each other. We, no, we don't needle each other and play each other. That's all real. Everything I say to Phil in a poker game is all real. All the needling him, and make fun of him, is all real, because I think he's a dumb idiot. But as far as <laughs> as far as friends go, yes, we are friends. Okay. Okay. And well, we're, but but we're, but that doesn't mean that I I just don't love ripping on him and making fun of him because he's such a schmuck. Right, I understand that. Okay. So I was told, we, we, the reason, told me that. Go ahead, go ahead. What'd you say? Someone had told me that uh, you guys like actually discuss poker strategy. And uh, my buddies well, all said you guys have never discussed poker strategy. We had never discussed poker strategy up until two years ago when uh, when I decided when he came to me and said, Mike, I can't win anymore. What? Why can't I win anymore? And I said, all you have to do is do this and this and this, and you'll win again. And then he won back to back bracelets. Okay, so that's when he started winning, and now he's not winning anymore, and he asked me why he's not winning anymore again, and I told him why he's not winning anymore, and he doesn't seem to want to listen to me because he's got a big ego and he thinks he's God's gifts to the world. So I told him I was done trying to help him. But we are friends, but he is a schmuck, and yes, I love making fun of him. Okay, so that, that answered my question perfect, man. I was right because I had read that you guys did, like, share a strategy like a we while back. We, yeah, we, like, we had crazy. never shared a strategy up until 2006. Uh, we had never really were We were just acquaintances till after I busted his ass in the 05 Tournament of Champions. And then after that, <laughs> after after he realized that I was schooling him left and right, that uh, that uh, maybe he'd come over and he could ask me some questions. And and don't get me wrong, Phil's helped me a lot with a lot of, a lot of good things, too. Um, and I give Phil a lot of credit for uh, helping me with a lot of good things too, so it's it works two ways. But as far as uh, having to listen to how good he is uh, over and over and over and over yeah, and over and over and over, and I'm telling yeah, you right, annoying, I'm man. telling you right now, it's like he's so sick in the head, you have no idea. I talked to him on Skype last night, and I said to him, I said, "What's going on, Phil?" And he says, "Oh, I'm in Louisville," and he starts talking about how he's going to the Kentucky Derby. And he's like, I'm in Louisville, and I'm online looking at new Phil Hummuth clothing line designs. So there he was talking about himself. It didn't take less than a second. 
I said, great to hear, Phil. Have a nice day. That was my Phil Hummel story for last night. But anyway, I appreciate the right call. On. Right on, hey, man. Thanks for talking to me. You got Thanks. it, Good man. Luck. Thank you. And, and Andrew says, uh, uh, look him up and say hello to him next time he's around. <laughs> All right, later. man. Deal. Bye. You know, I'm, I'm really hoping our next caller knows who I am. Dude, you're a nobody, dude. I really am. You're like nobody. You're you going to have to like really... I did, I did you're the gonna, scoop. Dude, you're really going to have to like really put your head to the ground and really have a good World Series this year. Huh? I, I'm not playing any events. <laughs> <laughs> playing the 40K and the main event, and that's it. Are you kidding? Why? No, let's Hello? play yep. that and make some Over money. There. Hello! Welcome to the mouthpiece! What's up, man? Hello! Welcome to the mouthpiece. This is Mike. It's my birthday. Say hey, hello. Uh, this is Shelby. I was wondering... Uh, Shelby, you didn't say happy now. birthday to me first. Say happy birthday to me happy first. Happy birthday, Mike. Okay, Shelby. I'm in the, I, I have a special guest with me also. His Ooh. name is Andrew. Good to see you, Robel. Do you know What's who up, he is? Shelby? I, I, do, I do know who that you is. You do know who he is? Hi, Andrew. You're the first one, Shelby. All right. You know? I, I do. I, I've watched, I I watched quite a lot of poker. Okay, great. So what's going on? What's your question for me today? Or us. I uh, I seem to feel like a Phil Hellmuth Jr. when I play online because I get so many bad beats and then I. You feel like you're I, a uh, Phil Hellmuth I, Jr. Don't don't I, feel I like do, you because do. you get bad beats. Don't. I it, get it, terrible bad beats. Well, I, Phil Hellmuth doesn't get, get bad, bad beats. Phil Hellmuth just just thinks that every hand he's supposed to play, he's supposed to win. Well, well I act out like. I oh, act you act like, like Phil, so. and you act and you yeah. act and you and you run and you just scream at people when you get a bad beat. Uh-huh, pretty much. My computer, uh, that, you, uh, can't, you can't do that. See, I used to do I, that I all the time, okay? And you don't want to run the fish off. When, when a guy puts a, a ridiculously bad beat on you, 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 you get a good LOL and a nice hand is always good enough, or a, or a nice hand is good enough, because meanwhile, yeah. behind your back, you could just sit there and just laugh and say, this guy will be broke within the next two hours, because that's what I do. I mean, uh, uh, the only time I ever, like, make fun of people who who play bad are people I've known for a long time that are considered really good players and people think that are good players and then when they make ridiculously bad plays then I laugh at them and say and, and people think you're a good player ha huh? and I'll make fun of them but other than that if you don't know them you should never you should never ever say anything that to people that play bad that's uh, that's what I was I, any, any I mean, you have any you... insight on that buddy yeah like when I was young I used I... to talk a lot of <laughs> that's how I became friends with Mike we play together online and I just talk nonstop. <laughs> And it's just unproductive, you know. It's going to actually throw you off your game. You're going to get it's all very, emotionally riled up, and you're not going to be able to make good logical decisions anymore. Which it's is, very true. When I first met this kid online, he talked so much shit and want to play me, ha ha, let's this, 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 and he'd show me bluffs, ha ha ha. <laughs> and I was just like, if I meet this kid, I'm going to fucking kill him. And I, I mean, I, I, I couldn't stand him. And then. You know, uh, after a while, he started being a little bit nice to me online, and then the next thing you know, he met me in person, and and you know, he said, you know, I'm sorry, I acted like an idiot when I was younger, and and the next thing you know, we're pretty good friends now. So uh, I never thought, you know, you never know who you're going to become friends with, and uh, especially like uh, even with being become friends with Phil Hummuth, that was something I never would thought I'd become either because he's such a jack off in a game. So uh, you know, you respect <laughs> people for who they are, and. Uh, and uh, to, if, you, if you beat up on the fish and tell them how bad they are, who are you going to make money on? There ain't, there ain't, there's not many fish left in the poker world, so uh, you don't want to, you don't want to educate anybody. That, that's certainly true. Uh, and I guess what is a good way to, to cope with bad beats? Because I cope with bad beats. Obviously. Well, the first thing I should think yeah. you should do is what I do is like I think you should see a psychiatrist. Psychiatrists are good. They put you on nice little meds that level you off. So when you take beats, you go, you take big deep breaths and you say, okay. And you say, nice hand. Because uh, if not, you, if you're crazy like I used to be, you just start throwing things everywhere, dropping computers in the pool and throwing mouse through the wall and <laughs> things like that. But now I'm, I'm more relaxed, more, uh, I mean, I'm more level-headed. And uh, I don't know, man, you might need to go see a shrink. I love going to see my shrink. I just saw mine... Uh, like four days ago, got all kinds of new meds, and I feel great. Like, I'll just say, Shelby, <laughs> like, you might want to even consider a mindset change. Like, poker, you know, it's a long run game. Like, any given day, you know, you're, even if you're a really good player, you know, if you're a professional, you're only going to win like 50, 60% of the days. And if you know, you let yourself get mad and upset every day you lose, you're just not going to be a happy person. And you just need to think about poker as a game in the long run, and your goal is to win, you know, over week periods or month periods. 
And winning, you know, one pot or winning during one day or one session is just, you know, it's meaningless. Do you understand that? That's, I believe that's true. All right. So that's what you got to do. You got to get yourself that in a good frame of mind, positive thinking. Also, you can do what I did also. Is I bought a couple books on the power of positive thinking. It gives you a, gets you in a really good mindset if you start losing, you know, and you start reading my, uh, some more pages. Finley? Yeah, so you start reading more pages of your books, you know, and it helps you. There's different guides to help you get positive. I mean, I have actually ways to get positive when things are going negative for me. So um, I think that'll work for you, too. Awesome. Thank you all. All so right, much. buddy. Take care, man. Have a good one. You too. Peace. You too. Thank you. Welcome to the mouthpiece. It's my birthday. What's going on? Hey, Mike. This is Jeff. Wow, I actually got through. This is awesome. Jeff, yeah, before Mike. you say a word, you say, happy birthday, Mike. Happy birthday, Mike. Thank you, Jeff. What's going on, buddy? Uh, not much, man. Just uh, hanging in there. It's for say, you know, I've really enjoyed watching you play over the years, Mike. My favorite poker player. You know, I picked up you know, a lot of uh, books that you wrote in, and I have the, uh, the full tilt strategy got. I just got done reading the uh, Omaha 8 or Better section, and I really enjoyed reading that, and uh, it's okay. awesome. Yeah, that was, a good, that was a good little piece I wrote. Do you, uh, I also have in, the, in my, uh, in my uh, presence right now, uh, Andrew, good to see you, Robles. Do you know who he is? Uh, yeah. Oh, you I do, do know who he is? Okay, so he's sitting here next to me, so... Um, if you got any questions for either one of us, uh, you can ask them at any time. Yeah, it's also awesome. your birthday, Mike. Yeah, you got through um, to me. It's my birthday. You read my chapter on Omaha I Ate or Better, which it should teach you a lot. Because that, that chapter, when I wrote that, is really, really the most, for a nine-handed Omaha I Ate or Better game, is, is really the most important thing. I mean, you can't get more information out of a small chapter than you can get out of that. Absolutely. Uh, Mike, I just... I just wanted to ask you, you know, I've been playing now for, like, almost two years, and okay. I definitely, you know, noticed uh, an improvement in my game, and I'm probably going to read this when I pick up your uh, latest book, Check Raise the Devil, which I'm really looking yes, forward uh, to. Yeah, my, my book is will be out May 12th. Uh, it's done. It's finished. It came out beautifully, and for, uh, for everybody out there, we're going to be discussing that uh, here on top of the show a lot about my book, and, uh, yeah, I hope forward, you'll, you'll enjoy reading that. Absolutely. Uh, what I wanted to ask you was, um, like, again, I'll probably read this in your book. Um, you've been playing for a long time now, and, I mean, when you first started playing, I mean, how long did it take you while playing before you really felt comfortable with the game? Like, you felt like you could hold your own ground and how long? You know, play against, like, expert players. How and, long was I, I playing I think... before I felt comfortable uh, playing against expert players and better players? Is that your question? Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to answer it, and then Andrew's going to answer it also. Uh, I felt, honestly, I, when I first started playing, I, I, I was like a natural, and I beat, beat up on all the competition I played at. I didn't even know that there was even like higher limit games, so once I found out that they played like higher than one four double eight limits, because this was bad, I started playing in 1991, so there was no internet, and there was no nothing, so... And then I found like 10, 20 limit and 20, 40 limit and 40. Back then it was all limit hold them. And, and then I got to, to moving on up. And as I moved on up, I got to realizing that I found like two or three players that played better than me in the whole world. So it was like, I was like top five limit hold them players <laughs> in the world back in 1997. Now I, there's probably like 100,000 people that play limit hold them better than me because I, I, I suck. But uh, um, right. I, just, I just basically. Uh, but when that, that, that's that's great because it's like you know I'm trying to you know take the game like the next level and you know, I always wondered like you know there's some players that just you know it just comes up like you said like naturally the other players have to like they really have to like right. work on it. When do you? Uh, I wonder how long. I'll, I'll let Andrew answer really that question really too. Uh, to, you know you got to, like that level that you wanted to be at. When did you uh, realize that you but, were um, able to play against better, better players? That's great, Mike. Go ahead, Andrew. Okay, when I started out playing poker, I played home games, and, you know, I was in the same situation as Mike. I was, like, you know, one of the best players in those games. But when I was, like, 18, I started playing on the European Poker Tour. I was playing against, you know, all these guys I had seen on TV, and, like, I was intimidated, you know, and I made some bad plays against them. But, you know, as you get more experience, you just realize they're playing the same game as you, you know. They don't have superhuman powers. They're just making, you know, decisions on how to play their cards. And you just have to play your same game against them. And um, I think it's okay to play in games where there's a lot better players than you are. 
you know, as long as you, you know, there's players a lot worse than you are too, who you're making money off of, you know, and then you can just try to, you know, avoid the good players or only play against them, you know, with solid holdings. There you go. So that's his advice on that. Uh, that, that that's great. It's great and I appreciate, advice. you know, I appreciate you calling. I appreciate you getting through to me on my birthday. And, uh, and I'm, I appreciate you when my book comes out, uh, picking it up. Uh, I think uh, uh, Full Tilt's going to be running a big... Uh, we're going to be running a big uh, thing. They're going to be giving away a lot of books. Uh, so there's going to be a big promotion on my book. And um, uh, give me a call anytime. I appreciate it. Uh, absolutely, Mike. Anyway, happy birthday. Have a great time tonight. You know, don't do anything too crazy. Um, and I'll talk to you soon, all right? Take care. You got care. it, buddy. Take care, man. Have okay. a good one. Well, I hope you all enjoyed our show this today. It's been a good birthday show for me. Andrew, yep. thank you very much yep. for being on the show. Great I appreciate it. Show. And uh, for all you out there, we'll see you next week on the Mouthpiece. Peace. Peace.